Hello and welcome to Family Tech, where you get all the tech tips, news, and information to help you understand and manage the technology in your home. And if this isn't your first time here, welcome back. I'm so excited today to introduce my guest. I've actually known her for years and years and years. Uh, this is Kristen Duke. Tell me a little bit about yourself and what you kind of do. Hello, hello. I am I, a mentor to parents of teenagers. I love teenagers. I know many parents get stressed about raising teenagers, or if you don't have teens yet, you're fearful of having a teen in the future. So my goal is to help parents feel less fear and more hope in raising teenagers. And I love your whole approach. You know, I, on Instagram, she's got so many awesome reels about conversations you should have with your kids and how to approach those like so just a whole wealth of information so what is your like instagram handle how can people find you thank you so much i'm glad to hear that i'm a big proponent of wanting to talk about all of the things and i know how tricky it can be instagram i'm kristen duke chats because i just like to chat about all the topics <laughs> And you can also find me on my website, kristenduke.com. I've got a connection book freebie there if anybody wants to download that. But I really just love to help bring up topics and questions that you can ask your teens. Some people are like, I want to talk about this, but I don't know how to do it. And so I really try and help guide people through that because I've looked for those same resources and I'm still raising teenagers and I'm still needing to talk and ask. And every child is different. I've got four kids and they all need different approaches. So it's a lot of trial and error. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that so strange how different each of your kids can be? Like, you know, something that's going to work for this kid completely doesn't work for the other. You're like, like, come on guys, get, like, let's, let's get together and at least let, give know. me something. <laughs> right. It gives a little help and experience. I do. I have two boys and two girls, two introverts, two extroverts, and they all just have different, you know, a cocktail of different personality <laughs> traits that just make it all fun and unique. Yeah. So, um, so definitely go follow her, um, check out that resource that she has on her website for sure. I will link her website and Instagram account in the description below. Um, if you have any questions at all, for sure, let us know in the chat and we will get to those. But I do have some questions that I've already prepared. Um, if you have not subscribed to my channel, definitely go ahead and subscribe and like this video helps YouTube helps me. So um, go ahead. And when you're making decisions about technology use for your teens, how important do you think it is to get their input on what you're going to do, what you're going to allow, all of the above? I'm a big fan of getting their input. And like I said, with my four kids, we've approached technology so differently. My oldest is 22 now. And, you know, the, the conversation's been around for a long time. And I am just a big fan of coming to the table together, parents listing their needs and hopes and concerns, teens listing the same thing, and finding a way to compromise. You know, maybe you don't, want something that your teen does want and you say okay you know it's kind of like I think about like the Halloween the Halloween candy like sharing of things like sure uh, here I'll trade you this if you'll trade me this right so you have yeah. to really you come to the table with your desires and recognize I also want my teenager to feel competent that they are well informed and making decisions and where I feel really strongly about this I could give a little on this and, you know, right. let go or compromise or, you know, come to a comfort conversation and understanding. Yeah, I totally agree with that. And I, I think it's also a changing target. So, you know, my teen gets older, so, you know, my, my, my teenage daughter, my oldest is 17 and she will be 18 soon. Recently she came to me, Hey, what do you think about me getting Tumblr? And I'm like, okay, you know, let's talk about it. Let's see what are the risks? What, you know, you know, do you feel like you can avoid those? Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Get, get Tumblr because you know, you're going to be 18 soon. I have removed most of the parental controls on her devices. So right. like, she doesn't even need to ask me to download an app anymore. Like she can just download apps, but she still felt the need to like come to me and yeah. say, hey, I'm thinking about getting this social media app. What do you think about that? Like, 
Which I but think I like, is great. It's great that your daughter feels safe and trusted to come to you with that conversation, even though she knows she could probably do it if she wanted to, and she could just right. do it if she wants to, but she values your opinion. And that's really the hope in parenting teens is that you have that kind of relationship where you can talk openly and say, mm. or, I mean, you could have said, I, I actually have a little experience with it and I don't know that it's the best. And right. still, she can make the decision either way. I actually don't know that much about Tumblr, so I have no, oh, no yeah. conversation about that. But I love that she brought it up to you to seek your advice. And because I, I am a big proponent also at 17, they're, they're kind of driving their own their own situation. And, um, and they're under your roof and you have the opportunity to guide them through it because pretty soon they're going to be doing whatever they want. <laughs> Exactly. I know that is my goal to like slowly remove parental controls, you know, as they age. So by the time they're like almost 18, I'm totally hands off there. You know, hopefully I've taught them well enough to make their own decisions at that point. Yeah. Um, I love it. But like you were saying, um, it helps them also if they do some like research on their own. So um, kind of talk sure. about that. Like, so, okay. Say, so, Hey, yeah, you want Tumblr you know, what kind of research have you done about that app or something right. like that? What, what do you Yeah, I think sometimes, you know, you can send them links. Um, yeah. You can say, oh, I, you know, I read something about it. Let me see if I can find the link and I'll send it to you. Sure. You read through it and we can talk about it. Right. And so yeah. it is helpful. And that's something I try and provide my audience that I'm not always so good at with every topic is um, <laughs> ideally here's a good uh, informative link Right. And this would be a good thing to send to your teenagers because sometimes, you know, teens see it as a lecture when you talk about sure. this, that, and the other. But if they see that an expert from, I don't know, New York Times or, you know, Psychology Today or whatever, you know, say, I read this, it really resonates with me. I'd like you to read it and then let's talk about it. You know, what were the points that stuck out to you? Yeah. And sometimes that third party buy in like really helps. Um, I've told this story on this channel before when my daughter was learning how to ride a bike, she like literally would just go boneless. Like just ugh. like we butted heads about her riding a bike for months and months and months. And, you know, I would threaten, I would like do all the things I'm like, I'm just going to throw your bike away. This is ridiculous. <laughs> and, you know, you're not even trying and then one day I was at work and I come home and she's riding her bike. And I say to the nanny, I'm like, how'd you get her to ride up, ride her bike? And she goes, oh, I didn't know she couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right? like, oh, <laughs> so it's just like the butting heads with mom sometimes right. and when you get that like third party buy-in, yeah, it just sure. changes the game a little bit. Right. Even though, yes, even though I'm kind of considered a parenting expert or a mentor or something, um, my, my kids don't see that and right. they, they need to hear from a real professional. You know, my husband's a physical right. therapist, the same thing. Like I don't always believe what he says, but if another physical therapist said the same right. thing, I trust that and believe it. But yeah, too close for comfort. Sometimes mom, dad, um, even getting a grandparent or a friend, you know, to have the conversation sometimes it's maybe it's not even an article you could say hey why don't you talk to grandpa about this he knows some things or your uncle you know just having another trusted adult to hear from is beneficial yeah totally agree and i love just even the fact of like teaching them how to do their own research about a topic yeah. um so you they're like okay i want this I need to do, I need to know what the dangers are before I come to mom with it. Like right. you know, as you like, keep telling them, okay, you know, tell me this, 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 and this about the app that you want. And then they can figure out, oh, okay, when I want a new app, I need to do this kind of research first. Right. Yeah. I love that. Sometimes Google can be overwhelming. So you can say, why don't you go Google dangers of, you know, X, Y, Z or you know, something like that or what to watch out for and kind of give them the words to do that search helps. Yeah, totally. Um, so how do you talk to your kids about, well, and we have a comment here, um, from my sister, but she says she knows you as well. Um, oh, hi. <laughs> yeah, I see Amy. Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> my sister's so nice. Um, 
So how do you talk to your kids about parental controls or monitoring if that is something that you do? It's tricky because almost always the first statement that comes out of their mouth is what you don't trust me. Yep. Yep. (laughs) Because we have talked a lot about the concerns and the dangers. And to me, one of my biggest concerns is not so much what, what they're going to search or potentially stumbling upon. To me, it's the time consumption. And that's something that I'm really trying to help my teens understand is listen, I know I can do unlimited and I've got this, you know, adult perspective and I just, I want to help you, you know, limit your time and just recognize and talking about the research of, you know, the concerns for too much time, even on something good, even on something positive. And so the trust thing has definitely come up where our kids have said that and we don't have a whole lot of, um, controls, especially as they get older, but we have found that with younger, my daughter, she just turned 14 this week. So she was 13, but, um, in the past year, kind of graduating from a non-smartphone to a smartphone Mm -hmm. and just saying, you know, so we mostly it's put a time limit on things and just, you know, she's pretty mature. She understands, um, dangers and concerns. And we talk a lot about it. But um, she did come back with the trust thing and like, listen, you're still learning and growing. And a part of it is just comparing to her sister who's 17, who has a lot less controls. Sure. She's four years ahead of you. She has had a lot of growth and it's hard for them to understand and really kind of just pointing it back to saying there are concerns that everybody deals with. It's not just you. And just recognizing that we're helping to teach and guide things that they don't know as much as they think they know. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know everything. They I'm think they shocked. know all the things. <laughs> <laughs> Completely shocking information. Um, yeah, I totally agree with that. Um, you know, we, when they start out with, you know, a smart device, we definitely have very strict controls and monitoring in place. And I just tell them like, yeah, I will be, you know, easing up as we go. But like at the beginning, you need to learn how to use it. And this is going to help you learn how to use it. Yeah. And so we just go with that approach. But yeah. And I mean, I, I'd really take no credit for how my daughter has turned out because, I mean, she's just amazing. But um, but she'll Sometimes, even, yeah. yeah, she'll come to me and say like, hey, can you put a time limit on YouTube for, you know, for the next week? Because I, you know, I keep getting distracted or I need to focus on this project that I'm working on or whatever. And I'm like, oh, yeah, sure. You know, so she understands when she's like, I can't do it myself right now. Right. And I so I need a little extra help. Yeah. Yeah. That's really great. And I think that comes along with, you know, you've, you've established a, a healthy relationship around talking about these difficult things and she knows that you trust her and that she just needs a little help, which I think is great. Yeah. yeah. I was like, that was my favorite conversation with her. She's I'm like, well, yes, I can. <laughs> well, that's awesome. And so I even think about myself sometimes like, you know, we get these box of chocolate covered almonds at Costco and they're so good and you can just sit and eat them. And I'll just hand them to my husband sometimes. I'm like, hide these for me. You know, I need help sometimes too. Or, you know, whether it's a treat or even my phone sometimes. Yeah. And sometimes my kids, I have to remind me, I do say, I do run a business from my phone. So it's maybe a little bit different, but I do get that sometimes, you know, the importance of listening with your eyes, like put it down, have a conversation and be present. And so it's, it's a constant reminder for all of us adults that are educated and know better too. Right. Yeah. And I absolutely encourage adults to set parental controls on their own devices. You know, they're a lot easier to override because you're just like, okay, well, it's telling me that I've spent too much time on Facebook today, but it's fine. I'm just going to override that. But at least you've got that reminder. You're like, Ooh, maybe, maybe I can do something different, you know? Yeah. Yeah, a little stop in the day. Yeah. And Amy says, it's so great for them to learn how to limit their own time on their phones while they're young. Otherwise, they'll never be able to control it as adults. 
I mean, right. For it's sure. even hard for us adults to control it. So, yeah. And it's good. You know, it's funny. Um, I watched the movie Screenagers and I have like mixed thoughts and it's, it's been a while since I watched it. So I don't remember details, but it is a word that comes up a lot in our house and my kids don't want to be screenagers. And they often say like, you know, I'll, I'll show like footage of like our family life on Instagram and they'll be like, mom, can you redo that? I look like a screenager because they were just on their phone in the background right. of, you know, whatever it is that I was videoing. And, you know, they don't want that perception either. And so yeah. they recognize, I mean, at least I appreciate that having the conversations up. They don't want to have the perception that they're always on their phones and they know, um, I mean, at least just we've talked about it and it is interesting to see, oh, some kids, like, you know, I've driven kids around recently and but, you know, their phones are a big part of their lives and, you know, they're sharing, like if they're sitting there sharing, oh, look at this funny video. But if they're kind of in their own world in a car, that's where you need to have an extra conversation of be present with the people around you. Yeah. And I've actually, um, cause my daughter will like put on her headphones and be like oblivious to the world for, you know, for a long time. And so like, I recently had a conversation with her, like, Hey, you know what? Maybe let the headphones go for most of the day. Like, you know, maybe an hour a day or something with the headphones, but like when you're making some food downstairs, you know, let's, let's be aware of our surroundings. No, I love that. And the headphones thing is another uh, topic that I have tried to talk about a lot too. And now that they have like the two different air, I can't remember what they're ever called pods um so i'll go on a walk with my daughter and she likes to listen to the music and i love it she'll be like do you want one of my airpods so we can listen to oh, music cute. together and i love yeah. that because i think it's a great way to say i recognize that you love your music and you want to listen to it and since we're doing this thing together let's do the music together too or whatever so it's tough because yeah. they love their music all the time right and <laughs> yes like you said let's just be conscious about when we're in the presence with others, maybe not as much. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I love that. Um, so are there any social media apps that you do not allow? And if so, why? Or like what age level or, you know, what are kind of your rules? I am that? pretty liberal <laughs> when it comes to social media. So I'm like, <laughs> how do I answer this? Because <laughs> I don't, I, I haven't listened enough to what you share to know your stance. But, um, and, and I, it's one of those things that I, you know, I have this, I have this guide, Teens and Social Media. It's a free guide. I'm happy to share it with anyone that I, I love social media and I have had kids that love social media. And I just am a big advocate for if you're, if they're on it, you need to be on it. Amen. To, like, if they're not, if they want to be on Snapchat, you need to be on Snapchat enough to know how to navigate Snapchat. But yeah. my biggest thing is if they're wanting to be on it, I totally support saying, you know what, let's wait until like 13 is the minimum because that's, that's Instagram, that's Snapchat. Yep. Their rules are you're supposed to be 13. So yes. if your kid's asking at 11 or 12, just say Instagram rules are you got to be 13. So there's well, it's that. actually law. So um, we could go uh, into the COPA are. law. But, but the reason yeah, for the age, that. yes, good. It's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. Yeah, like it's, it's, it's a place for reason. illegal for you. <laughs> okay, good. Tell them it's illegal. Yeah. Leave it at that. But then when they're 13, 14 and they're interested, still some parents are like, mm, not feeling good about it. Yeah. My direction that I give in my guide that I'm referencing is get it on your phone. So I got my phone right here. Okay. My daughter wants to be on social media. You can log into five different accounts on Instagram. I've logged into multiple myself. So if she yeah, says, yeah. I want Instagram, I'll say, okay, we'll get you an Instagram account. When you want to look at it, say, mom, can I see your phone and sit next to me? So yeah. she's sitting next to me. She's scrolling. I'm seeing if she wants to comment, like guide them through it. Okay. Your friend posted this. I like to say, if your friend posts, like I did something fun, don't just, uh, one of my favorites is, uh, be a doer, not just a viewer. Oh, like if they're that. just scrolling like this, like that's actually meant, like the mental health experts have said, that's not ideal. But if they're scrolling and they're like, oh, my friend went to Hawaii, comment and say, looks like you had fun with your family. Like not only is it just thoughtful and nice, it's yeah. stepping into the experience. It's like you're having a conversation with your friend that says, I went to Hawaii. 
if your friend standing in front of you saying, I went to Hawaii, you wouldn't just be like, like, like. <laughs> or nothing, right? right. And it yeah. also breeds kind of the competitiveness and the jealousy to not say something. And so I like to guide them on like, be excited for your friend or, yeah. you know, say something. So there's hard things too. My friend, they went to a birthday party and it hurts my feelings, you know, talk through like, oh, you know, if they see that, they don't necessarily have to say something, but you can say, that's hurtful. I've not been invited to things before too. And I see my friends at age 40 posting yeah. about going out and I wasn't invited. Okay. It's a part of life that needs to yeah. be addressed at 13, 14, 40, 50. You know, right. it is hard. And I understand the parents who say, I don't want my kids to even have to go there. And I, I feel like I want to help my kids walk through it instead of pretend like it doesn't exist. So that's a lot of my suggestions is get it on your phone, guide them through it. Maybe it's weeks, maybe it's months. And when you feel like, you know, they've responded well and you've had good discussions and you feel like they're ready, then you can say, all right, you can have it on your phone. And then you can yeah. kind of set the parameters and let's, I'd like to continue our conversations about when you get your feelings hurt, just, I'd love to hear about it, you know? And I'll yeah. tell you more about when my feelings are hurt or whatever. So <laughs> to me, that's my biggest concern is just having them get their feelings hurt and then be in their heads and be lonely yeah. about it. And mm -hmm. I just want to make sure that they know it happens to everyone. And, you know, talking about the highlight reel and they're not sharing about how they failed a test and they're not sharing right. how they fought with their sibling and, you know, helping them see the realities of life. So as it pertains to apps, no, I'm pretty open. Um, I, I just talk a lot about, we talk a lot about pornography in our house and we talk a lot about nude selfies and, you know, whatever. And right. you know, I, I feel like my kids are educated enough and I'm not dumb enough to think that it still couldn't happen, but um, right. we talk a, a lot and I kind of, I'm a spot checker. I spot check less and less as they get older um, and they kind of know that. And so right. <laughs> I haven't had anything that has been a major concern. Yeah, you know, and I have a similar approach to you, so you're nervous about okay. that. But, um, but yeah, I am a I'm a huge fan of technology in general. So yeah. you know, we have never really limited technology in this house, but more of an education standpoint where yeah. I'm going to teach you how to use this properly, and then you know, and then kind of watch you use it for a little while. And then go from there. You know, if, yeah. if we have to walk anything back, we certainly will, you know, but the approach of I'm teaching you how to use this. This is something you want. Okay. You've showed me, you know, what the dangers of it are. Okay. How are you going to approach those dangers, you know, and having those conversations. Um, but yeah, again, under 13, absolutely. No, that's a hard no in this house. Um, but you know, that after 13, then we'll talk about it. Okay. You want this app. Okay. Well, let's look at it. Let's, you know, do a few things. There's still a few that would be still a hard no, like Omegle, hard, hard, hard. No. I don't um, even know what that is. What'd you say? Oh, illegal. Oh, no, Omegle. It's oh, it's, like, oh, oh, like, did she say illegal or did she say an app that no. I don't even know what about? See, I'm not even familiar with that. <laughs> it's, okay, it's basically, <laughs> yeah, no, it's just a, like, a, um, you would chat with somebody random. It, it used to be called chat roulette. So it okay. would just pair you with somebody random. Okay. The first time I went on that page, um, cause I always test all these things out, you know? Uh -huh. So like, and this was like, you know, I don't know, 10 years ago or something. I first went on the page and literally in front of me was a giant male genitalia. <laughs> and that was the first no, thing of like, nope, that's going to be a hard no in this house. Yeah. Well, um, you know what's interesting is I, I, I see this a lot on social media and I know that there are accounts that say, don't let your kids get social media until they're 18. And my <laughs> thought is there are so many college students. It is hard enough to go off to college by yourself to cook and to do bills and to do school and you don't have your family around. That's when you want social media to be introduced. Yeah. I'm very <laughs> concerned about that. But a lot of people are like, I'm not gonna let my kids get social media to out of the house. And I'm like, 
I'm concerned. And it's yeah. like not my business. And I have good friends that have said this and I'm like, I just, I just prefer to help guide them through it while they're right. here. Same thing with yeah. dating, same thing with driving, anything that's scary. Let's learn about it together before you're living on your own and having to deal with life on your own. Cause that's hard. Yeah. Well, like I always um, compare it to banking too. Like if I'm not going to teach my kids how to use finances and then they go off to college and they're expected to like have a budget and all of these things. And, oh, and here's a credit card. You know, you have a $10,000 limit. Like, oh, great. I have $10,000. Well, what do, I want? do yeah. you know? Um, but it's the same thing. If I yeah. haven't taught them that before they just leave the house, they're going to rack up a $10,000 credit card bill. Right. So. Yes, exactly. I mean, honestly, I have seen a good number of college students really struggle. And I just, I, I can't even imagine trying to learn how to handle social media at that time. So yeah, it, even if you're feeling like 16, you know, 16 is great if you want to wait till then too. But I, 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 I'm going to talk a little bit more about social media in May. Um, okay. I kind of have these monthly themes that I talk about things and people have been asking about be real and I love be real because I it, too. <laughs> it's definitely a really good tame first starter yep. for social media. And at the same time, my biggest concern for be real is they're going to see what their friends are doing and yep. it's often with other friends and that can feel hurtful. And at the same time, I've seen my girls kind of navigate just more recently. Oh, you know, I invited this friend to this thing and she said she couldn't go because she didn't feel well. And then her be real, she was out with another friend. And I'm like, yeah, oh, it's a hard reality. And you have to learn how to figure out, do I say something to her or do I just let it go? You know, yeah. and that's that's life anyway. That, like, so yeah. it's just kind of like, yes, they wouldn't have known otherwise. But then they kind of learn how to take these mature steps because yeah. they're encountering things that they might not otherwise too. Yeah. And I love that because again, like you're saying, they're encountering these situations in a really safe environment where they can talk to you about it and talk about their feelings instead of like, you know, when they're an adult and like that happens to them, they don't know how to process those emotions. They don't know how to go about like, you know, do I approach them? Do I just let it go? You know? And so having you there to like really bounce that off of is such a great tool, I think. Yeah. And if you really want to dangle a carrot, <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you're finding your kids aren't communicating, and sometimes they might not communicate that with you, but if you have, if you want to put any control, you can say, I'm okay with you having social media with the exception that we talk, yeah. <laughs> you know, we talk through things, you know, and it kind of starts with when they begin. Um, and as they get older, there'll be more, you can just say, just be open with me because I want to help you navigate. There's a lot of emotions that come along with it. You know, a lot of people talking about the, the dark side of social media. I feel like I'm less concerned about the dark side, like pornographic images. Maybe it's just because yeah. my, I haven't encountered it with my kids. Um, and, you know, we just talked a lot about, yeah, you're going to see things. This is what you do. You X out, you, you know, turn. If, tell me if your right. friends ever send these pictures or ask for pictures, you know. But yeah. I'm less concerned about that, though I know it exists, than I am about yeah. just social ramifications and the internal battles that come along with. And, and I think also I was mentioning Be Real, like it normalizes what I like about Be Real is I follow a lot of my kids' friends too. It normalizes 90% of the time they're at their house watching TV without right. friends <laughs> yeah. or they're like with their parents in the background. Like it yeah. actually normalizes the fact, yes, this happened and her friend was with another friend somewhere else. Yeah. But 90% of the time they're pretty boring. You know, like, right. Or they're in school. It kind of yeah. normalizes the fact like, oh, they sit home and watch a TV show. Yeah. Just like I do, you know? Right. So right. I, 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 that's what I think is great about it. It normalizes normal life. And every yeah. once in a while, they're out with a friend or doing something. Sure. And maybe it hurts your feelings. And maybe it's just like, okay, they're out with this friend. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> And when you're an adult and you see your sister on B-Real with friends for a girl's night out, you can be glad you weren't invited. You can be home in your PJs. Right? That's my, uh, my friend always calls that uh, the joy of missing out. 
instead oh, of the fear sure. of missing out. So. Yeah. And everybody's so different, you know, like the introverts want to stay home in PJs. Right. I am someone that's gotten my feelings hurt. Like, Oh, I wasn't invited. But, right. um, and some other people are just happy to have not been asked. <laughs> right. Um, so you did just touch on pornography and I want to get into that for a bit because um, that's a huge one that so many parents are concerned about. Um, I know you have so many frequent conversations. I have frequent conversations with my kids about it. So what advice do you have for parents who are uncomfortable talking to their kids about pornography? And just to preface that, like I literally saw on a Facebook group that I'm in, you know, like, hey, I, you know, I want to talk to my 11 year old about pornography. And I'm like, you haven't talked to your 11 year old about pornography yet. <laughs> like, like, let's get on that. But yeah, the earlier but, uh, the better for sure. Well, so my yeah. first thought is get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Yes. <laughs> you know, so that's the thought is like, as a parent, you have to talk about uncomfortable things. If you're not talking about it, they're hearing about it from other people. And like you said, the earlier, the better. So I remember when my boys were six and four, they were my two oldest. And um, I was like, I'm going to talk to them about sex. And I remember we had the conversation and, you know, my oldest was, has always been quieter. And my second child is like so many questions and like, you know, whatever. So we're like, you know, this is, this is how babies are made. And, my, and then my second son's like, well, I haven't seen you and dad do that. And we're like, <laughs> okay, well, that's good. I'm that's glad. Good. <laughs> you're right you haven't seen us do that and I'm glad and I told my friend about it <laughs> whose son was friends with him I told my friend I was like oh yeah listen to this funny discussion we had and this is what my son said and she all of a sudden kind of panicked and got nervous because her son was five same age yeah. and she was like oh she's probably he's probably gonna now go and tell my son so I have to be prepared sure. you know all of this stuff and like my son like it was just a normal conversation. You know, we have a book that they call the naked book. It's like a cartoon book or whatever. So yeah. honestly, the earlier, the better, because it's not strange to them. It's normal. Right. It's like, this is, this isn't like, this is a penis. This is a vagina. And like, say those words. Cause when I was younger, um, they had the funny names, you know, for my mom called like the boys. It's like a wetter, like that they pee from it. Right. So it's like, it's called a wetter. <laughs> and like hearing that now is so funny. But, um, and I had a hard time too. Like, I remember when I got married, I was like, penis. Yeah. <laughs> like that word is just a word that I wasn't used to acknowledging. And it felt like wrong yeah. almost to say it. But I mean, if you can normalize body parts and normalize how babies yeah. are made younger. And I mean, talk about sex and pornography, like you said, earlier than you think that you need to. Um, yeah then it just normalizes as it goes through. And even still, my kids are like, mom's talking about pornography again. <laughs> and they don't love it because they are more aware of, and they are hearing, you know, other approaches to it. But at the same time, like my kids are not uncomfortable saying sex and penis and vagina and yeah. those words because we've made it a normal part of our vocabulary and I, I'm grateful, like when my boys were teenagers, I could say, so I don't know if you guys are experiencing any of this, but, yeah. you know, or like, if you want to talk to dad, that's fine too, or, you know, whatever. And I think, so just going back to the pornography thing is like normalizing curiosity because yes. yeah, naked people, I, it's curious mm -hmm. to me too. Yeah. Of course yeah. it's curious to a 10, 11, 15, 17 year old. For sure. um, normalizing it, taking the shame out of the fact that it is normal to be curious and just, yeah. um, and at the same time, there are a lot of detrimental, harmful effects that come from viewing it and seeking it out and helping them understand that emotional aspect that comes mm -hmm. along with it. Um, and the, the downsides and, and it's, it's something that's really hard to grasp. I've even, ha I felt like I've had a difficult time even explaining it. And I feel like there are a lot of great resources now, like little videos for kids and older. Um, yeah. But I just feel like um, as it pertains to social media, there is a decent amount of it. And people define pornography so differently. Like my husband. So true. Defines like the JCPenney bra section. <laughs> as sure. And I'm yeah. like, 
Yeah. <laughs> And it's helpful for me to realize too, because as a female, I'm like, I just need a bra. And I appreciate seeing how it fits this woman, you know? And I needed to know and understand, oh, when I leave, and not even that, even just like a People magazine of someone in like a ball gown that's more revealing. Like I needed, it was, I was appreciative to hear from him that that affects him different than it affects me. And it affects us all differently. So, um, and being conscious of, you know, having that out and available and, and so, and, and pointing it out on, I don't know, I don't point it out as much on shows, but I, we, you know, if, if there's ever anything we need to fast through as a family and just say, you know, talking a lot about if you're in a movie with your friends, you know, maybe you can go to the bathroom or right. I don't know. Some people are like, stand up for what's right. And I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> you, can take, you can just take care of yourself sometimes too. And excuse right. yourself or leave or maybe that's yeah. time to get on your phone and check right. if mom texted or whatever. Yeah. Um, but something just very important on my phone suddenly. <laughs> those brain effects. Yeah. How it, how, how it, it affects you long-term and it leads you down a dark path that isn't a good place to be and helping them understand what that means. Yeah, I totally agree. So in my family with my sister, um, we have two brothers and I don't think we talked about sex once in our house. Yeah, we didn't either. Yeah. And <laughs> I knew I I had... I did, but I don't remember it. Yeah. I truly, truly do not remember a single conversation, even when I was like engaged to be married, like nothing. Right. And, um, I just really didn't want that for my family. Like I wanted to be super open about it. And, you know, and especially for me, because I've been in IT for over 20 years, we've always had so much technology, you know, I'm always working or whatever. And um, so like at two or three, I'm like, okay, if you see naked mommies and daddies, turn it off and come tell me, you know, so we're always kind of, age appropriate, but still talking about those. Um, yeah. <laughs> my sister said, true story. I thought my parents got pregnant from just kissing until I was in high school. <laughs> so, um, you know, just having those like small conversations frequently where yeah. it's not a big deal. You're not like, okay, we're going to have this like big sit down and it's like, am I in trouble? What are we talking about? You know, just having all those like, you know, small conversations throughout the day. Oh, wow. Like that girl's pretty scantily clad, you know, maybe like, and then have that segue into conversations, you know, instead of like having these big, like intimidating conversations. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Where it stresses them out. Right. It it is helpful to try and do that. And sometimes it's hard to remember too. And, you know, I've talked to my community also, um, tried to share different questions and angles to ask, but it's almost like you have to set a timer on your phone, like once a month or something just to be like, right. Talk about pornography, talk about sex (laughs) because we just live our lives and it's hard to remember. So if I think of it, I'm like, all right, we're just going to talk about it for a couple of minutes. And it's helpful for them to know, listen guys, five minutes. Okay. I'm going to talk for five minutes and then we'll change the subject. And they appreciate right. knowing I can do this for five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I like also what you said there about taking the shame away from it, um, you know, where it's not such a big, scary topic. Um, you know, so my son will come to me and say, hey, um, I stumbled across something inappropriate, you know just letting you know. And, you know, I always say like, oh, I'm sorry that you saw that. Like, is it something that we need to block? You know, so say it's on a website that he frequents. Um, but he, so he wants to still go to the website, but he's letting me know that he saw something inappropriate on that website. I'm like, okay, that's great. You know, or if it's a website, he doesn't really frequent I'm like, okay, should we block that one? So that doesn't happen again, you know, and really get his input. Like, okay, no, like I still like this website. I'll just try and avoid that, you know, and, and then just kind of working with them on that. Yeah. I love that. I think that's great. And that's helpful because I think some people, you know, that you provide that tech for that. Cause I think, Oh, I'm not quite even sure how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but that's it does what help. That I, for. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> right. That's what family tech is around for. Um, 
So when kids do break rules, because kids will break rules, what kind of punishments work? What don't? Uh, give me all the parenting advice on that. Okay, well, I'll start with, I'm not a big fan of punishments. <laughs> there you go. I'm kind, of, I'm kind of in the field of, and, and like I said, I haven't had any major problems. So I sure. think if I had, maybe it would be different. I guess I just am of the opinion, you know, there, I hear a lot of conversation in parenting lately is let your kids make mistakes, let them make mistakes while they're home. You know, if, if there's too much of a, I, I've heard a lot about the punishments don't actually help them learn the lesson. They just make them resentful of you. Sure. And so while I'm definitely not in the realm of, I'm just going to do whatever because I just want my kid to like me or whatever. Right. I'm not in that category, right. but I am in the area of, I want my teen to, to learn how to trust themselves. I want them to yeah. learn how to navigate. And um, so I guess my thought is with the punishment is so much dependent on what they did. You know, like mm -hmm. you said, your son came to you and said, I stumbled upon this. Um, I mean, if there was an instance where, you know, you kind of found that they'd been seeking it out and they'd had a real struggle. I, I wouldn't frame it so much as since you did this, you don't get your device anymore. I right. would frame it more as what do you think would be helpful for you? You yeah. know, would it be helpful for you to take a break and put it in their hands and let them have the control? And if they are feeling, whether they're feeling caught and guilty or whether they're feeling remorse and need help, um, yeah giving the kind of the reins back to that. And some are more mature and can handle that. Some will right. say, Oh, I think I'll be fine. I don't think I need to do anything differently. Um, kind of probe and say, you know, I feel like something, something needs to change in order to help you. You know, what would that be? Yeah. And so I think that there is a lot of, um, Oh, they made this mistake in order for them to improve upon this. We need to take it away. Right. And then they get it, you know, for a week or two and then they get it back. I would like to think that there's some guidance and conversation that's happening around it. But I think a lot of times it's hard. The harder thing to do is to educate and, you know, reinforce and to talk. The easy thing to do is to take it away. Right. And then get it back. <laughs> and I think a lot of parents think that's beneficial. And I just don't think that it is. But I think everyone needs like, you know, like you said, even adults, like, oh, my timer's gone off. Everyone needs that reminder or that step in or that, um, you know, figure out what to do. So I guess I don't know. There's so there's so many variables, but I'm just not a fan of just taking it away. I think yeah. it, it, and instigating something. It's more of what do you think we you could do to improve and how can I help facilitate that? And maybe they do say, I need a break you know, or I need this taken off or I need this blocked. But I think anytime we can put the power back in their hands, mm -hmm. that's what's going to help them learn long-term, not just taking something away. Yeah, I completely agree with that. I actually wrote an article on Verizon's website, like specifically about that, how, you know, when you take away, like if I'm going to punish you and I'm taking away your entire phone, I'm also taking away your access to your friends. Um, I'm taking away your access to, you know, sometimes things you need for school and things like that. So it doesn't always fit the crime yeah. when you just like take it all away. You know, on the other hand, I have, you know, if my daughter spent too much time on YouTube and didn't get her assignment done, maybe I'll block YouTube from her sure. phone for a week, you know, yeah. because that that's what was causing her to oh, not get yeah. her homework done. So, yeah. you know, I try and really fit the punishment to the sure. crime where yeah. I'm like, okay, you didn't get your homework done because you were browsing on YouTube. So you've lost your access to YouTube for a week, you know? Yeah. And, and I agree. Like anytime you can kind of fit it to whatever it is, was the problem is the most ideal. Yeah. And um, yeah, cause they, they, they need help. Cause yeah, YouTube's very interesting and <laughs> right distracting from all the things that you should be doing. 
<laughs> I spend way too long on YouTube. I will say that. It's a great resource and it's just can be fun. Yeah. It really is. Like, and I mean, I'm obsessed with um, legal things. Like I wanted to be a lawyer when I was in high school and stuff. And so like, I follow these lawyers on YouTube and lawyers are long winded and like, <laughs> I can listen to those videos for hours. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> um, so what are some key conversations that you think you should have with your kids around technology? I mean, there's several other conversations, which she is an amazing resource. So definitely follow her on Instagram if you are not already, because there's lots of other conversations, but just around technology, what are some key conversations that you should have? Key conversations around technology. Um, t I think time is kind of my number one that I keep yeah, thinking. It's a great one. Whether it's on your phone or Netflix. I mean, it's so funny. My husband has such great uh, self-control you know, if there's a series where there's 10 episodes, he's yeah. like, one is good. Oh, we'll man. <laughs> we'll watch another one tomorrow night. And I'm like, but he's also like an early to bed kind of guy. And so yeah. if we're watching something together as a family, my girls are like, all right, next episode, next episode. And he's like, yeah, one's good. I'm like, <laughs> is it? But I mean, there is, there is something to say for it. You know, they have this yeah. unlimited, if it, you know, they've got this 10 episode TV series. And when they're done yeah. with that, when's the, where's the next 10 episode series? It's this constant, yeah. uh, there, there's just so much at their fingers. It's unlimited. And so yeah. kind of trying to have that, like just even encouraging that kind of self-control, um, yeah. is great. Um, just because of the time factor. And so we, we talk a lot about just alternatives to, yeah, sitting and watching or scrolling or whatever. So time, I think is the big factor in just helping them to realize mental health detriments to overconsumption. Um, exactly. And then the, the dangers, you know, mm -hmm. like you'd mentioned there. So there's pornography and there's, yeah. I'll just call them bad guys out there looking yeah. <laughs> predators. Yeah. Them. And um, helping them be aware it's, it's a really difficult line for me to draw um, and helping them be aware of dangers versus making them be fearful, not making them, but having them be fearful, you know? Yeah. I, I, I have a lot of online friends that I have never met before. Right. 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 I, I haven't met you in real life. I have met your sister yeah. in real life, but I, mean, yeah. I have so many friends and I love talking to people. And I love connecting yeah. to people that I don't know. So right. I am someone who has, experienced the value of making friends online and how fun yeah. it really is. And at the same time, my 13, 15 year old, I don't want them to necessarily make a whole lot of friends online that they don't know. Right. And, you know, like yeah. they have private social media and they're having people, you know, reach out to connect with them. And I'll say she's, cause I, my daughter had a birthday a couple of days ago. And so her friends were doing birthday tributes and then tagging her. So she had a lot of follow requests after that. And oh, my whole thought is if they're connected to your friend, like you might not know them, but yeah. they are friends with your friend, you know, like find out who it is before you just say yes. Right. right. I'm all about expanding your friendship circle. Yeah. Um, but not necessarily with people like that don't have any connection to any of your friends, you know, For and sure. just, yeah, be aware of the fact that, some people are catfishing. Some people are saying they're 13 year old and have a picture when yep. they are not. <laughs> and yeah. being aware of, um, yeah, we don't meet people places. And anyway, so th that's definitely a concern. It's not a strong concern for me because I've talked about it enough and I feel like my kids are level headed. I think there yeah. are kids yeah. whose parents thought they were level headed and they still met up with a stranger. So right. I'm not above thinking it couldn't happen. Um, so yeah, time and, uh, the darkness of the web, yeah. which is kind of pornography and bad guys, I'll kind of sum all together. And then just yeah. the emotions that come along with, uh, I guess I'm going towards social media. I know tech can be so broad, but no, yeah, no, for sure. That's, that's part emotion of emotion coaching, um, yeah. That comes along with, even if it's just texting, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, my kids don't have social media, but they're texting. But there's a lot that happens in those group chats. There's a lot that happens yeah. in one-on-one -on -one texting chats. You know, yes, I wrote notes to my friends, but there's 
a lot of things talked about. And one of the things, even with one of my kids, uh, well, one of my daughters has a couple of friends that have shared concerning things. And then my, da- my daughter said, I, you know, she said that she wants to hurt herself. And I said, and she's like, mom, don't tell anyone. And I said, listen, I want to support you and being a confidant for your friend. But when they're talking about harming themselves, we have to do the responsible thing, which is to reach out to their parent or to reach out to the school or to reach out to someone because how terrible would you feel if they shared that with you and then something really bad happened? Yeah. That's the responsible thing. And she's like, no, that's like breaking my friend's trust. And I said, I, I understand. And if they're talking about anything else, I support right. you in that, but this is dangerous and it's, it's yeah. potentially life threatening. So helping them, like those are the adult conversations that they have, that they're dealing with at 13 when they have yeah. other friends who are talking about things that are concerning and even just things like, um, you know, if someone's comp, like if someone uh, saying just too many things that they maybe shouldn't be saying and mm. just helping guide my daughter through saying, I'd appreciate it if you wouldn't say that, you know, and right. um, have dealing with those things just in a text conversation um, so it's earning that trust enough so that they're willing to share with you, or, you know, if you're stumbling upon it, approaching them and say, Hey, I saw something concerning. I'd like to help guide you through how to respond to this person. So yeah, lots of things. <laughs> yeah. I love that. And I love what you said about, um, I'm going to have to remember what it was. Um, gosh. It's I, know, I, I spewed so many different things, texting and social <laughs> emotions and meeting strangers. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it was around meeting. Str- oh yeah. It's just the fear mongering. That is my, oh, yeah. my biggest pet peeve with a lot of people who kind of talk about what I talk about, like kids and social media and technology, you know, there's so much fear mongering and it just drives me insane. And, yeah, you know, same. cause I'm at, I'm in a place where I'm like, no, let's guide them. Let's not scare them. You know? Yeah, so, and I've talked sure. about this before when I come across like a news article where some kid has gotten kidnapped, you know, because they were communicating with somebody nefarious online, you know, I'll show them that article. I'm like, Oh, Hey, like, did you see this? You know, you know, and we just talk about that, like, oh, you know, what should they have done? And like, not in a like fearful place, but sure. in a like, yeah. oh, you know, this is really sad that this happens out there. And mm-hmm. what can we do to protect ourselves so that it doesn't happen to us? You know? Yeah, I love that. And I totally agree with you. And that's why one of my main taglines is more hope and less fear in parenting teenagers, yes. because there is a lot of fear wrapped up and a lot of parents get step into that. And I just prefer to say, let's take a fearful experience and see how we can, you know, make it more hopeful. Um, in yeah, being open, having conversation, kind of normalizing. Yeah. There's a lot of fearful things out there. Let's focus on the good things and tackle the, those scary things at the same time too, in a less scary way. Yeah, for sure. Um, so you mentioned this, which I love, like the, you know, your daughter saw something, you know, her friend might harm themselves. So like what other like issues are you seeing them have to deal with on social media and like, and how would you kind of help them through those issues? You already mentioned that one, which is great. Uh, but are there others? Yeah. So that one was a text situation specifically. So I guess what I was trying to say is a lot of parents are concerned about social media, but a lot of these things come up texting as well. For sure. And so it's heavy topics that you aren't sure how to approach sometimes. And I wasn't even sure how to approach sometimes. Um, But I think just social media in general, I guess I think um, I've seen my teens, like I said, um, just scrolling and I'm a big advocate of don't just see what your friends are doing, but I want you to post too. If you're not posting something, you're not being like, that's the part of social media is like, it's a give and a take. If you're just scrolling, like to me, that's concerning as a parent, if they just want to scroll and some people are, there's a balance, right? You don't want to post every day, but I'm like, 
we go on a family vacation or you go to somewhere fun, post about it. Like it's good yeah. news that you're sharing with your friends. Your friends are sharing their good news. Why would you not also share your good news? And so yeah. what I've seen from my kids is the overthinking either. Yeah. Like I, one of my kids is like, oh, I don't want to seem like I'm bragging. I'm like, okay. Sure. I, get I, I get that a lot of people see social media as like a place to brag. Mm -hmm. And then someone else, you know, and then another child or another time they'll say, you know, I don't know if this is like interesting enough. Sure. So, I don't want to post that. so they're kind of overthinking a lot of what they're sharing. So I've done a lot of what I've, it's funny because I'm like, I'm sharing every day. I'm sharing like, right, right. I'm sharing my life, you know, <laughs> and my kids, I don't know if they've seen that and they're like, eh, or, um, uh, but they've kind of been like, uh, nervous to share like it's not good enough or whatever and and so I've kind of tried to say even if you're not sharing your life like I saw a count years ago uh but teenagers started posting the positive and that's what it was called oh, fun. all right if you don't want to share about your vocation if you don't want to share about this cool event that happened in your life post the positive you know find yeah. a quote that reaches you or share a scripture or something that's like I just don't want them to have social media just about consuming. I want it to be about producing nice. as well. Like it's a give and take. So if you're going to be on it, share every once in a while too. And so um, that's, that's kind of to me of being a doer and not just a viewer. So it's not just the scrolling part, but it's like be interactive. Um, yeah. So it's, it's be social on social media, right. be social. So share some of yours and, interact with your friends when they're sharing some of theirs and, you know, have it be a conversation. And so, and another thing I see with um, the teenagers is mostly with the teenage girls, which seem to be on social media a little bit more than the boys, but um, yeah. they, they are good and supportive with their friends. So I'll say like my daughter shares a picture um, and, you know, she's probably in it and I'll see her friends, not just comment once, but, like five separate individual, you're so beautiful. I want to marry you. Like just funny things, right. but they're kind of like boosting each other's like comment numbers, which yeah. I see and I get it. And I'm like, well, that's a nice way to support. And at the same time, I'm also trying to say, how about you not, don't just comment about their looks. It right. is, girls do want to hear you look pretty or something like that. But you could also like, let's not make the majority of our comments about looks say that looks like so much fun or that's so awesome that you got to do that. And yeah. so it's tough because girls, if there is a lack of that completely, they might question, oh, nobody's right. saying, even, even like my girl, daughter wears a cute outfit to school. Nobody commented on my outfit today. Yeah. And I'll have to be like, you know what? I get that. I liked being commented on my outfit as well. I still yeah. appreciate it, you know, when someone right. says, I like your dress or your shirt. And at the same time, you have to remind yourself, you just you can't get that every day. Like you win yeah. some, you don't win some, <laughs> you know, and, and this is the same with social media. Sometimes they're going to get comments yeah. of like, that's amazing. And sometimes they're going to get crickets and right. no comments. And that kind of feels painful sometimes too. So I do like that Instagram has stuff like you can turn off the comments. You can, you know, hide yeah. how many likes or whatever. And I've seen more people doing that. Um, and so there, there's just so many avenues to discuss and it's just important to bring it all up and to say, I, yeah, I like being commented on my dress also. And nobody commented on my dress in this. And I even find sometimes yeah. I share like birthday posts of my kids and I have lots of strangers in my community saying happy yeah. birthday, but then like my friends in real life, <laughs> oh. my friend actually knows my kid and they're not commenting. Right. No. <laughs> Oh, I'm like, whatever. I can't. Yeah. I, I've done this long enough to have a thicker skin about it. I still feel, I yeah. still feel stings, but um, right. there's just, yeah, there's a lot to think about. And so, like I said, I do have that guide that kind of, as I'm talking through all of this, I think, oh, I probably need to add some things to it, but um, yeah. <laughs> there's just lots of avenues and just discuss it, discuss it all and help them to know that you feel some of the same things, even at an older age. Yeah. Well, and I like what you mentioned way earlier about be real. It kind of takes all of that out of that because it's just like you're, you know, I have so many pictures of me exactly right here in my be real, like because yeah, I'm always working. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like, like real life is boring. And yeah. like, it's yeah. so fun to, for like your kids to see 
Yeah, real life is boring most of the time. <laughs> yeah, most of the time. And every once in a while, there's fun things too. Right, right. Um, so during my conversation with Alvaro Gomez, um, and I don't know if you've heard of him, he's a kind of, um, you know, well, he's a school resource officer and he talks a lot about oh, like yeah. technology in the schools and what it's doing. And I love how he mentioned, um, and this isn't what part of the, questions that I already sent you, but you mentioned something. He mentioned that what he doesn't like about social media is that it is um, telling ki you know kids that their worth is their looks. Like that that's the only thing worthwhile about them. Um, Cause like you were saying, you know, oh, you know, cute dress or you look so cute and whatever. And I totally resonated with that. I'm like, yeah, you know, if we can get away from focusing on the looks and what he said that he asks his kids um, when they come home is um, what makes them like, what was it? Like what makes them have worth? Like what is worthy about them and having them come up with things that give them worth um, instead of their looks, he said like was super important um, so I love what you mentioned there, like, you know, let's focus away from commenting about their looks and commenting more on like, oh, that looks so fun or whatever. Yeah. And, and it's tricky because um, I even heard this about like complimenting your own children. Right. And I think like with girls like, oh, you look so pretty as a princess. And you know what? Some people need to hear that. And I think it's OK to say that. So if I'm telling my daughter. And if you're going to comment five times on your friend's account, which you do, or two, <laughs> twice, have it be a one in one, right? Oh, you look so pretty right. and that looks so fun. Um, yeah. And just trying to weigh that because our because our girls, especially, my girls still need to hear that they're pretty and yeah. they need to hear that they're smart and they need to hear that they're capable and strong and all of these other things. And so I think right. it's kind of trying to, to, to put in that mixture of, of yeah. a variety of things. Um, so it starts with parents talking to their kids and it starts talk, instructing your kids on how to compliment their own friends and to recognize um, and how to receive the compliments as well. Yeah. And that is one hard thing that I have. Like I have a really hard time with compliments. And so like teaching them that is actually really good because I need help with that too. Um, so also during my conversation with Officer Gomez, he talked about how so many kids today think that something is bullying, but it's actually social conflict. Yeah. And he really helps them understand that there's a difference. So what are your thoughts on that? Do you agree with that? What do you think? No, I think that's good. And it's important. I definitely think the word bully and bullying has been thrown around so much overused, incorrectly used. And so I don't know if you're like t referencing in tech online or I mean, yeah, I mean, most mostly online because that's what okay. I focus on. But yeah, it could well, be. In yes. Person. And I think it's tricky, too, because, um, you know, people hide behind technology or they see technology as a barrier that they can be more unkind. It's easier to be unkind on technology yeah. than in person. And so yes. people can say hurtful things. Um, and and even one of the, the things with my daughter um somebody had said something unkind through a series of texts and um, I did not hear about what she had responded to until after he, she responded. And she kind of approached it as um, a little bit of your, she didn't say bully, but she's, she kind of went off about how uh, the girl and she's like, and everybody else thinks so too. And I was like, Oh, so <laughs> talk to me about this before you sent that off. Because I, I don't feel like she she didn't say mean things, but she was like informing this person that right. she was being mean and everybody else thinks so too. And I was like, right. okay, so let's uh let's talk about, let's, let's talk about how I, I wish you would have said that and said and, and it like I said with social media, sometimes it's an open comments, but generally it's you know in a DM or you know a private message right. or a text where people feel like they can just say, and I've talked to parents um, even just recently in one in my, in my group membership that I have, she said, my kid was the one 
that was saying the unkind things. And I think like really defining what bullying is and helping them to see, um, yeah, it's easy to be mean on electronic, yeah. you know, right. even in my old age and my wiseness, like I have thoughts, I got some strong thoughts about what I could do, Yeah, but I don't because I know a little bit better. And when you're younger, you don't have that filter established as well yet. And whether it's their friends saying unkind things to them or them saying unkind things to someone else, I think it's important to just emphasize, um, to, to try and monitor yourself and maybe just to kind of give yourself some time before saying something or write it down or talk it over with somebody else. Um, that's something I've learned because I, I have a tendency to be impulsive. And yeah. Over the years, I've just said, I, I'm going to wait it out. Maybe it's an hour, maybe it's 24 hours. I, and I usually feel differently <laughs> after yeah. some time has passed. So yeah, I, I, I do. About what he said about bullying, I can't remember the original question. Oh, just that it's social conflict and like, you know, that you maybe just disagree yeah. with somebody instead yes. of, you know, they're, they're taking it as you're bullying me, but really they're just disagreeing with what you're saying. Yes, for sure. It's definitely important to distinguish that for sure. And I mean, I even think that about like, maybe this is going a little bit too far, but even like racism or other things, like some people are saying like, this is racism and it's like, well, it's mean, but are they racist? I don't know. And I mean, it's kind of in the same line. You kind of have to define the, the levels and the variation. Like this is actually what bullying is. It's like danger and it's threatening harm. Right. Right. Saying you're ugly. It's not nice. Right. Or saying you're wrong, it's not nice. Yeah. But is it bullying? Yeah. Yeah. Because he was saying in his school, like 90%, or I think it was even higher than that, like 95% of the like bullying cases, like where the parents are coming to him, my kid is getting bullied and he's like looking at, it, he's like, oh, like really, this is just conflict. This is not yeah. to the point where like, there is imminent danger or harm right. threatened or things well, it's like that. Well, even being left out. A lot of people are like, yeah. my daughter used to be friends with all of these kids and now they're hanging out without her. And I'm like, yeah, that's a bummer. Right. That hurts. Yeah. <laughs> I've experienced it. You know, like, I don't know. Yeah. And I think so many parents just want to fix and we all want to fix. We all want to make it all better. And just some things we just got to let them handle on their own. And yeah, if there's danger or, you know, too much meanness, you can step in and help guide. But yeah, I'm glad that you're speaking out about those things because that is an important distinction. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, and then you were, said something, oh gosh, now I've lost it. But um, <laughs> it was about. Sure it was good. It was so good. Um, but oh, about um, I, I love this on your Instagram. You were talking about having them be comfortable being uncomfortable. Like, and you talked about it earlier in this conversation about us, like how parents need to also be comfortable with being uncomfortable. But I loved when you talked about this in relation to the kids because I feel like. A lot of times our kids, like, again, we're just trying to fix everything. We don't want them to be in any uncomfortable spaces. We want everything to be happy and go lucky. And it's just like not preparing them for the world. And I just want your thoughts on that. Yeah. You know, that's something that I've really had to work through because as an involved mother, <laughs> who cares about my kids? I mean, we're, we all care about our kids. Some of us yeah. are more involved than others. My husband, my husband has said something along the lines of, I need to cut the apron strings at some point, you know, like maybe I'm overly involved, whatever. Um, but <laughs> sure, fine. it's so hard for, it's so hard for me. So hard for so yeah. many parents to see their kids suffer and in pain, but it's so important for them to learn how to process and walk through those uncomfortable situations. Even um, sometimes it's, you know, your kid had a bad, bad day and you want to fix it and make it all better. So you want to take them out to get ice cream. I'm actually, I don't know. Sometimes I think, yeah, that's great. That's great bonding. Like you want to help them think differently. And at the same time, I don't want to, I don't want to completely erase the fact. Like I, I want to help. I want to encourage them to know how to move through their emotions without patching things up. 
immediately yeah. or they didn't make a team, you know, let's go to Disneyland, you, you know, <laughs> let's find something that maybe matches, I guess it's, it's so hard to know because like I said, I want to fix all uncomfortable emotions for them. And at the same time, right. I've recently learned, I actually want them to have uncomfortable experiences so that they can learn to process them because life is hard and there's so many more things to come that are just going to be hard. And I don't, I don't want to always go into fix it mode, but it is my natural response. And so I'm trying to train myself to not go into fix it mode, to be uncomfortable with their discomfort and not to automatically feel like I have to be like, Oh, it's going to be okay. It's going to be fine. You have so many other great talents. You're going to make some other team. Don't worry about it. Those are the kinds of things that are naturally in my heart. And I right. know that they will have other great things, but in that moment, sometimes they just need to feel crappy and just let them feel it. Yeah. And I think you could still go out to get ice cream to cheer them up, but right. I don't know. It, it's tricky. Yeah. <laughs> it's so tricky. And like, like I said, I think that uh, parents are, you know, while we're creating these safe spaces for our kids, which I think is also super important, we also have to help them understand that the world is not necessarily a safe space all the time. So they can't expect this person and this person and this person to treat them exactly like their parent treats them. And yeah. they need to learn how to navigate that. You know, when somebody is out there saying something that you don't agree with or they're calling you the wrong name or something like that, like that's not necessarily their fault. You know, maybe they don't know. Maybe they have other, you know, other issues that they're not going to respond the same way. So you have to really help them understand the world can't cater to you and yeah. you have to know how to handle that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it, it's it's a tough thing for parents to watch. And it's it's important to help them, allow them, guide them through navigating that discomfort and not just try and take it away. Yeah, for sure. Well, thank you so much. I know we've gone a little over, so I'm so sorry. But it was such yeah, a great, great conversation. I just wanted to keep going forever and ever. Um so definitely I will put Kristen's links in the description, both here on YouTube and on Facebook. Um, so check her out. Wealth of information. I, every time, like I see one of your reels come up, I'm like, yes, exactly, exactly, exactly. So, oh, I love it. Thank you. It was fun to chat. Thanks for asking me. Yeah, of course. So we will see you guys next week. Um, I forget who my guest is at the moment, but <laughs> we'll be here next week again. So thanks Thank everyone. And we'll see you next time. Bye.